I have a hundred blues fest stories, but one of my favorite ones is, um, July, 1997. Um, I'm either 17 or just about to turn 17. Um, and I'm walking, it, it's the day of, of Anson Funderburg is playing and it was Anson and a room full of blues and Tony D and, um, Dr. John. And, um, so I was there super early middle of the day. Like the bands aren't even there's there might be sound checking. It was like a Saturday or something. And the music probably didn't start till like, let's say one o'clock or 2 PM. And I'm, I'm there at like 10 30, 11 AM. And I'm walking through the park. This was at majors Hill park. I believe I'm walking through the park with a, a good friend of mine, Brent. And we're saying like, how, how can we figure out how to meet Anson Funderburg? Like, how can we do this? I wonder how we can do this. We're talking about it. We're talking about it. And this guy walks by and we go, that was Anson Funderburg. So we run after him. Hey, Anson. Yeah. How are you boys? Like he's like a Southern guy, you know, from Texas. And, and then we talked to him and uh, I had him sign my jean jacket. And, um, and I said to him, I said to him, do you have a, um, do you have a fan club or something I could join? And he said, uh, he goes, uh, no, not, not really. We don't really have a fan club. And I said, okay, okay. Um, hey, is it okay if I, I video your show? And uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, go ahead, video the show. I said, okay, cool. All right, nice to meet you. See you later. Off we go. So then I, I video the show. And after the show, he comes to the, to the gate. So back then, the artist would almost always play and then come over to the gate and sign autographs for the 20 people that would actually come up, you know? And so there I was, and he finished signing all his autographs, and he said to me, um, hey, do you know of a, a place to eat around here? I'm 17 years old. I'm not the guy to ask. <laughs> yeah, McDonald's is your budget. Yeah. I don't know. I literally said, and this is hilarious. Well, the Rito Center is right there and they have a food court. <laughs> it's not a bad answer if he likes variety. <laughs> exactly. But it's just funny because like these are guys looking for like real food, not this nonsense, right? So uh, he goes, okay, okay, thanks. And then he goes, I'm going to go check with everybody. And then he goes back and then he comes back to the fence and I'm standing there with no joke, six or seven of my friends. We're all between the ages of 15 and 18. Okay. And he comes up, he goes, okay, well, you know what? We're going to eat back here. They've got food for us back here. And I'm like, oh, for a second there, I thought I was going to go with Anson Funderburg to the food court. I thought that we were going to hang out like, uh, and then he goes, but hey, do you guys want to come back here and eat with us? And we're like, yeah, <laughs> yes, Even better. please. He tells the security to let all of us in. We're all backstage now, and we're sitting at a table, and they're serving us like we're or like they're the artists. And it's just so funny to think back to that. Um, and we hung out all night, and then by the end of the night, he's like giving me his phone number. He's like, if you ever need a place to stay in Texas, here you go. And and we stayed in touch ever since. I talked to him like last week. And uh, and Anson is like a hugely influential Texas blues guitar player. He's on one of the Fabulous Thunderbirds albums. He's got an entire career of his own. And interesting uh, fact, you know, Beavis and Butthead, written by Mike Judge, right? Illustrated and written by Mike Judge. Mike Judge is a bass player. Hmm. Mike Judge was Anson Funderburg's bass player on tour. He's on the albums. What was Mike Judge doing on tour? Drawing. <clears throat> What's he drawing? A guy with big blonde hair named Beavis. Guess who that is? That's Anson Funderburg. <laughs> so wow. Anson, it, or Beavis is modeled after Anson's look with the big blonde hair. And so uh, there's a little pop culture reference.